Now, I don't know you personally, so no disrespect, but you clicked on this video for a reason. So today, I'm going to tell you why your timing sucks. And then I'm going to show you how to fix it literally overnight. One of the most difficult aspects of our job, unfortunately, is also the most important. And that's the ability to keep really good, solid, consistent time with whatever we're playing on the kit. So grooves, fills, solos, whatever. Like it needs to be nice and steady and solid pretty much all the time. So, you know, you go take lessons with a bunch of teachers. They all teach you. You got to start working with a metronome and they give you a bunch of exercises and stuff like that. But there's one thing that seems to always be left out. And in my opinion, it's absolutely the most important thing about developing rock solid time. And that's subdivisions. Nobody ever really tells you about subdivisions. I don't know why, but that is the key to playing with really good, solid, consistent time. Now your subdivisions is the foundation for every single thing that you play on the kit. Everything. So what do I mean by subdivisions for all you new drummers out there? The subdivisions basically are all the levels of, you know, your note values from, you know, holes, halves, quarters, eighths, sixteenths, thirty seconds, and then all the relative triplets. You have to become best friends with all of them. Because basically, regardless of what any teacher told you in the past, as far as developing good timing, and you've probably been given all kinds of different advice on how to use your metronome and maybe stick one under your pillow while you're sleeping, which by the way, is goofy. Don't do that. That's stupid. All that's going to do is keep you up at night. But the fact of the matter is this. <clears throat> your ability to play with great time has nothing to do with how well you can play with a metronome. It's got everything to do with how well you can subdivide this. The simple reason why your timing sucks is because you're not thinking about the subdivisions while you're playing. You're a little bit too distracted by what you got in front of you. You might be thinking a little bit more about you know, what that fill is going to sound like other than the sort of metronomic properties of the fill itself. So if you're not giving any regard to the timing, like I said, it's going to be unstable. Might speed up, might slow down, whatever. You got to be thinking about the subdivisions because that's the only thing that's going to keep it on track. Now the good news is it's a super easy fix and all you really got to start doing is practicing your subdivisions with a metronome. You can do this on the practice pad, you can do it on the drums, you can do it in front of the TV on your knees. 
but the goal is just to make sure that you can play every single one of the subdivisions nice and even around the quarter note, wherever that is. As soon as you count a song off, or if somebody else counts a song off or whatever, as soon as that happens, a grid lights up. And in this grid is every single available subdivision from, you know, whole notes to 30 seconds and beyond. Every note that you play from this point falls somewhere on this grid. And each one of these notes is a certain distance away from the quarter note pulse. As long as you're aware of the grid, you're going to play inside the grid and your timing is going to improve. This is the only way to develop playing great time without the aid of any kind of metronome, which to me is way more important than your ability to actually play with a metronome. So again, holes, halves, quarters, eighths, sixteenths, thirty seconds, and then all the relative triplets. If you get comfortable with each individual one of those and you can play them nice and even around the quarter note, then it's going to clean up everything you play. Because from that point, it's no longer just about the lick or the fill or the groove or whatever. Now, it's a lot more about the actual grid, making sure all of those notes are sitting in the grid nicely, and the timing of whatever it is that you're playing starts to become a little bit more important than the actual feel that you're playing. The more you start to think about that, the less important all of this stuff becomes. This stuff really isn't that important. All of this does is add a little color to your subdivision. If you strip all this stuff away, then all you got is this, right? If you want to add color to this, then you can just take that subdivision and, you know, orchestrate it however you want. It's all about building that internal clock. So the more often you work on that, the better it's going to get, the more comfortable you're going to be without needing any kind of time reference while you're playing. And everything that you play is just, it's going to line up. Now, of course, you don't want to sound like a robot. That's not the goal. The goal is you want to make that margin of drift, right, from whatever the tempo is supposed to be. If it's like 114 or something, then you can go plus or minus 2 BPM without even really noticing, you know, any kind of relative shift in tempo. So this is how you develop that nice sort of Steve Jordan-esque, human feel that just, you know, creates that nice bed, that nice pocket for the rest of the band. And then you can play whatever you want now on the drums because you're always aware of the subdivisions while you're playing. So that right there is the key. That's really all there is to it. And it's not just for drummers. This basically applies to every single instrument. You got to think about it. The reason why tight bands sound tight it's because every single person up there on the stage is subdividing at exactly the same rate. If you're not giving any consideration to the grid while you're playing, then your timing is unstable, right? You're just, you're shooting at balloons in the air and just hoping to hit one. But when you're aware of the grid, everything's going to tighten up. Trust me on this. That's it for me. I'm out. New viewers, new subscribers, welcome to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when the next video is coming out. 
subscribe button. Make sure you mash that before you bounce. Share this video if you dig it. Drop a comment below if you got one. Like, subscribe. See you next video.